Hey everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani once again from learn-automation.com. Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about inheritance in Python. So in the last lecture, we discussed about how to create classes, how to create methods, how to create object, and how to call the methods with the help of object, right? Now, in order to move forward, we should understand inheritance because this inheritance we are going to use a lot in the upcoming sessions. Whether you talk about exception handling, polymorphism, or any other modules or the packages that we are going to use in future will include inheritance. It is one of the most important topic when you talk about OOPs. Okay, so we'll see step by step what exactly is inheritance, different kind of inheritance. We'll see one by one. So let me switch back to my PPT. So let's talk about what is inheritance. So before jumping into technical details, technical definition, let's talk about inheritance in real life. So as we all inherit some properties from our parent, right? So let's take a very basic example that if your father, if your parents have some car, so you by default, you have this access to the car, right? By default, let's say if your parents have some properties, some assets, definitely you are part of their assets or their properties, right? So what exactly are doing? You're doing inheritance. So indirectly, all the things which your parents have is yours as well. So this is actually inheritance. So how exactly this inheritance will work in programming? Let's say you already have a class, okay, which is created by somebody else, or let's say one of your team member have created that class, that class have a couple of methods. Now you also have to write the similar methods, okay, but with some more functionality, or let's say you want to use that method, which is created by somebody else. Now, instead of creating directly from the scratch, what you can do, you can reuse that class, you can reuse that method with the help of inheritance. Okay, you don't need to write everything from scratch, you can simply inherit that class, you will get all their properties and methods in your class, and you can continue with your own set of functionality. So you don't need to write everything from the scratch, that is the beauty of inheritance. So you will inherit that class and you can continue with your own methods and properties. The main advantage, as you can see, reusability of code. I don't need to write everything from scratch. I can reuse it. So don't worry. I will show you uh, different examples. Okay. Different type of inheritance as well. Just give me a couple of minutes and everything will be clear. So throughout the video, I will be talking about different type of interface. So first we'll talk about single level inheritance. Then we will talk about multi level inheritance. And last we will discuss about multiple inheritance. And there is one more in inheritance called hybrid inheritance that I will give you as an assignment because that will be the combination of multi-level plus multiple inheritance. So let's see one by one. First, I will cover one type of inheritance. I will show you program. Then I will move to the next next one. Okay. So what exactly this sim single level inheritance says, suppose you already have a class called person. Okay. And this person class have a couple of methods. Let's say walk, run and eat. So if I'm creating another class, let's say this class says male or female or any other class, I want to access or I want to reuse all the method from person class. How can we do that? I have to simply inherit this person class from my male class and I can access all the properties and the methods from person class into this class. How actually we can do in programming? Let's see one by one. And once you understand this first level of inheritance, then I will go back. Uh, I will start the multi level and multiple. So let me switch back to the pie charm. Okay, so this is our pie charm. Let me create a simple class. I will first of all create a Python file and this Python file I will give as let's say inheritance. Now let me create a class and the moment you start working with inheritance, right? You will see different terminology. So do not get confused. You can call these classes. Okay. If I go back to this example, so person class, you can refer as base class or you can say parent class. Okay. And this class, which is male class, you can say the child class, subclass, drive class, etc. So don't worry about the terminologies. This will interchange many times with different blocks, different uh, videos, but the concept will remain same. So I'm creating a class and let's say this class name, I will give base. Okay. And I put colon colon and now I'm create going to create a method here. Okay. So this method, I will say def and let's say this 
I will say method name is base method okay and I will simply give a print statement and I will say I am in base class now I'm going to create another class this class is done okay I don't want to write or make it very complicated focus on the principle as of now focus on the fundamentals once you understand this everything will be easy okay don't worry worry about the complexity of the program that anyways we will do once we move her to different concept right once you start selenium api and other stuff we will be writing some complex code so i'm going to create another class and this time this class name i will say child class okay base child or you can say parent child so I'm just going to create another class called child and again I'm going to create a method and I will say child method okay and here I will simply write a print statement and I will say I am in child class now let me create object of child class so how do we create object I will simply say C I will just give any names I'm just giving C equal to child so this is my object now which is c the moment is a c dot you can see i'm able to call child method which we already created right so if i simply run this you can see it says i am in child class right now there's no connection between base class versus child class now i want to access this base method so one way to do this i will create object of this base class so i will say b equal to base class okay uh, just say base parenthesis so now b is our object i will say b dot and i can call this base method so this is what we are doing without inheritance now what if i want to access base method okay with the help of this object which is child class object so what we can do i can inherit this class which is nothing but base class so how do we inherit i will simply write parenthesis inside the parenthesis i will give the class name which i want to inherit in our case i want to inherit the base class okay now let's remove everything so what exactly i'm doing i'm just creating object of child class which is c and this child class is inheriting another class called base so now this time if I say C dot, can you see I'm able to access the base method as well because child class is now inheriting base class. Yeah, so if I just simply run this program, I will get the same output because I have not changed anything in the method. It is just with the help of one object, I'm able to call child class and base class as well. Now I just want to add a small disclaimer that each and every class in Python by default inherit object class as well. Okay. So the moment I say C dot, can you see apart from these two, which is coming from base, this is coming from child. I'm also getting so many other options you can see here, right? And all these are coming from object class. So whether you mention or not by default, each and every class in Python inherit object class. So this is just a single level inheritance. Let me create one variable. Okay. So this I will say name equal to Mukesh. So this is just one of the property which is available in the base class. I'm going to create another variable here called company. And here I will give the company name as learn hyphen automation. So with the help of the C object, you will see I can access both I will say C dot and I can see name so this name is actually coming from base right and if I say C dot I can see I'm getting company as well and this company is anyways available in the child class so we can directly access and you can see without any problem I'm able to access everything with the help of just one object which is of child class yeah, very easy. This is called single level inheritance. I'm able to access properties, which is nothing but variables. I'm able to access methods as well. Now let's jump into second example, which is multi level inheritance. So what exactly this multi level inheritance is? Suppose there's one class called C. Okay, 
I can take any class name, but just to make it simple, I will take ABC. Okay. So this class C extend another class called class B. Now this class B also inherit another class or the base class of class B is class A. So can you see this, right? I have multiple level of inheritance and indirectly, as we know, class A inherit object class. So now this concept is known as multi-level inheritance, single level, just we have one class, sorry, two classes, one is base, one is child. But when we say multi-level, you have series of classes and each class is extending another class or, you know, ex uh, inheriting another class. This is again very straightforward, but let me write a program so that all concepts will be clear. So I will just copy this program and I will simply paste and this time I will make it inheritance demo two. Okay. And let me remove everything. So first of all, I will say class A colon and here I'm going to create a method called hello world. Okay. Uh, let me just say method A. Okay. So that we can understand that this method is coming from class A, which method is coming from class B. So I will just main name it method A, method B and so on. And I will just give a print statement that I am coming from class A. In a similar way, I will be creating another class. I will say class B. And this time I will say method. Okay, just let me just put colon here method B and again I will say maybe I will copy paste this just to save some time and this time I will say I'm coming from class B and let me create one more class because this is the same example that we already discussed right now I would make it class C and I will say this is method C this is also as class C now, how do we achieve multi-level inheritance? Very easy. As you can see this diagram, class C is the subclass of class B, right? So I will say class C is inheriting another class called B. Now, as you can see this diagram, class B is inheriting another class called class A. So I will make it, this is inheriting class A. Now, very easy, just create object of class C. Again, guys, focus here that I'm creating one object called C, okay, and class name is C. So do not get confused. I'm just giving C here and it is C. Let's make it OBJ1, object one. I'm creating object of class C. To make it more specific, uh, let's say class A. And this also I will change to class A, this I will say class B, this I will mention as class B and I will mention as class C. Okay. Just to make it clear. So when I create object this time, I will say class C. So this is our object now. Okay. Why it is giving error? Okay. Because so I'm creating object of class C which is obj1 so as per this diagram class c can access all the methods and property of its own class from class b and from class a as well okay so if i say obj1 dot can you see i'm getting access to method a i'm getting access to method b and i'm also getting from c now this time when i run Again, very easy. It says I'm mean, from ABC because with the help of this, I'm able to call everything from class A, B and C. Make sense. Now let me create. Okay. Before we move it, I want to show you this thing. You can see this is a special uh, symbol, which is given by pie charm. So what it says, if you just put here, it says, is subclass by class B and C and the moment you put mouse over here it says is this is subclass by class C see the beauty of Python it is giving you everything the moment you write inheritance it is giving you this kind of additional information now 
this is very straightforward situation you will not get any doubt but the moment i create one more method okay uh, let's say def hello world okay and if i say hello from class a so what is happening right now i have just created one more method and if i just give the same method okay so before we keep the same method in different class i will simply call and i can say hello world and definitely when we say hello world it is available in class a and it will simply run and it will say hello from class a right but what if i give the same method in class b as well okay so the now the question comes okay uh, the moment i execute this program will it give me hello world from class b or from a or from both ideally i'm just calling once right so the moment i call hello world either it should give me from a or b let's right click and run can you see it is saying hello from class b but why it is not calling from class a because same method is available in class in class b right but when i say i just want to say hello world so ideally which one should get executed now here comes the another concept of override can you see this uh, special symbol from pycharm it says overrides method in class a and if you put mouse over here it says is overridden in class b again i just want to give you a intro about the next video that what exactly we will discuss so this feature is known as method overriding it is part of polymorphism that we have not discussed yet but we will be discussing again in, in upcoming videos so just want to give you the scenario that if same method is available in class a and class b but the moment you call uh, hello world from class c the method from class b will be called because of method overriding this one okay if i just give one more example if i put the same method in class c as well and if i say from class c now you can easily guess the output now hello world is available in class a class b and class c now obviously class c will override class b method right so if you see this one it says override methods in class b it means the moment you call hello world first of all it will check the immediate class which is class c and it will just execute this it will override class a and class b and you can see don't worry about method overriding i will be discussing in detail in the polymorphism this is just one glimpse i have given now the next one is very interesting so just do not skip that part because there we will also discuss one another very important concept called mro and you will be getting this question in interviews as well okay so what is mro and how it works in multi pal inheritance we'll see now so for that let me create another class just a second i will just say inheritance demo 2 and yeah so before we jump into technical details let me show you what exactly is multiple inheritance so suppose you have a class which is say class c now this class c is inheriting class a and class b as well okay so in the multi level we had class a then class b then class c but in this case class c is inheriting two classes parallelly together i'm just giving example of two but it can have multiple classes as well so now class c is extending class a or i will say inheriting class a and class b so what is the syntax how do we do let's see now and then we will talk about the next part which is mro for this i need again three classes that we anyways have so let me just double click and this time i will simply remove this part okay 
so now we have three classes and all these three classes are totally independent class a is independent b is independent c is independent so the moment i run this program this will definitely fail yeah because with the help of obj1 i can only access uh, method c right i cannot access anything so this will definitely will give me error now what this multiple inheritance says that you can extend or you can inherit more than one class in our case first of all i want to ex uh, inherit class a comma then i can also give i want i also want to inherit class b now let me just remove this and let me do one thing i will say hello world 1 hello world 2 just to give you a clear idea later on i will just give you i will put the same method name and i will tell about mro as of now again i will say c equal to class c which is i just want to create object and i will just say class c yes i will say c dot i can call method a i can call method b which is quite obvious and definitely method c and if i simply say c dot you can say i can also access hello world 1 and hello world 2 So in this case, this is our scenario. C is inheriting A and B. I can access everything, and this time we should get the proper output. And you can see, method A says I'm coming from class A. Method B says I'm coming from class B, and so on. Hello world and hello world two is also working fine. But what if I just change the scenario that I will put hello world here and hello world here? Now in this case. what should be the output okay i will just change it to hello world and i will simply remove everything because now they are not required the scenario says now it is you know inheriting two class and both the classes we have hello world so if i simply right click and run which one it should run let's see you can see it's actually calling hello world from class a which is this why it is happening let me just show you another part what if i say that class b comma class a still i should get the same output right but the moment i run you can see it changes the output so this is our situation right now so we have a class a we have a class b both the classes have the same method name so if i want to call function 1 in our case it's hello world which one it should take it will now follow mro which is method resolution order okay so what exactly is this mro it's just an one order in which python actually will check the hierarchy of the classes okay so in our case you can see hierarchy right class a and class b so now it should give priority to class a and then goes to class b so this is going to play a vital role when it comes to multiple inheritance and single method is available into multiple classes in our case function 1 function 1 right as per this ppt but as per our code hello world method so the moment i say class b and class a so first of all it should give priority to class b that's the reason it says hello from class b which is this but if i simply reverse the order if i say that it is uh class a and class b now hello world first of all it will take from class a so if i just right click it run you will see a different output now how do you verify okay let's say you this is what i am teaching you but what if you technically want to see that what is the method resolution order from python you just need to say print and just call class c okay and just call dot mro can you see this right click run sorry i just did a debug let me stop this debug 
right click run so can you see now it says the first priority will go to class C then class A class B and last the object class but what is class C now because I don't have any method in class C which is uh, the same name right hello world if I have the hello world in class C okay let's do that So now you know the output as python says priority will go to class c then class a and class b then object so in this case if i simply run my program can you see this it says hello from python c it is happening because of this mro method resolution order last time i will simply reverse this order this class c first inherit class b then class a in this case you will see this order will change so just right click run and you can see again it says first it will look for class c since we have changed here right it says then i will look for class b class c and last at the object class so this is how multiple inheritance works i hope i was able to make my point right the last one is hybrid inheritance that is the combination of multi-level with multiple inheritance that I will give you as part of the assignment you just explore it. it's quite easy just combine these two inheritance and you will be able to achieve hybrid inheritance guys this MRO is very important okay uh, in interviews as well you will get this question plus the moment you start working with some complex library you have to follow this okay once you move ahead you will see one class will be inheriting multiple classes and when it comes to multiple inheritance it is going to be very useful I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope all the concepts are clear. In case if you still have any doubt, don't worry. Let me know in the comment section and I will be happy to assist you. So in case if you're new to this channel, then please hit the subscribe button, like this video, share with your friends and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.